The Cherry Hill Kollel opened its doors in 2000. The Torah studied in this Kollel created a ripple effect of Kedusha that began to spread. It's a mission to get out of this came in a community of human life and everything has changed over as well. Shortly after Rabbi Klar joined the Kolo in 2001, Alex Landa entered the Kolo looking to learn and grow. I had grown up uh, without any Jewish background. The Kolo just opened and it was the perfect opportunity for me to go there. Inspired by the Torah atmosphere, Alex introduced his older brother, Gena, to the Kolo. Rabbi Klar said, uh, so when do you want to learn? I said, uh, I don't know, how about Sunday? Sunday 10.30? Fine. So that was the beginning of a uh, Sunday 10.30 class. Gena's oldest son, Jonathan Landa, came into the Kolo for the first time when he was a little boy. Rabbi Klar taught him the Aleph base. But after that, his only connection was witnessing his father's continued growth. That all changed when Jonathan turned 17 years old and came back to the Kolo. Around the age of 18, I decided that I wanted to go more into the direction of Orthodox Judaism. And I knew that the first person to turn to for advice as to where to go to yeshiva was was Rabbi Klar. One day my oldest son says that I'm gonna go to Israel for a fellowship. That fellowship turned into five years of learning in Eretz Yisrael. I never really knew what Judaism was. Without the Kolo, I really don't know where I would have been. There was really no path. It was just, I've been on a path of loss and confusion and it's really hard to even imagine you know, where I would be right now if it wasn't for the call. Genalanda then introduced his friend Lee Cohen to the call. I grew up going to a reform synagogue. My family was basically pretty secular. There is no other place in this planet that you can go other than a call to be able to see role models of what a human being is supposed to be and what a human being is supposed to do. And I was inspired by that. I said, wow, a human being could actually behave like that? And I wanted that. I wanted that for myself. He said, I heard you're, uh, you're almost on shots. And I said, yeah, I just finished it. He said, what do you mean? I'm like, mom, it's right now. I just finished it. He said, what? He jumps up and all the younger ladies get together. And we start singing and I just start crying like a baby. I must have cried for, I don't know, five, ten minutes. I couldn't stop. It was this seven and seven plus year journey that I, I conquered the mountain that I thought I could never conquer. It was an incredible thing. Without the Cherry Hill Community Kollel, I would never have made the journey to be a Baal Tshuva. There's a good chance I would have gotten frustrated and just given up and gone back to my secular lifestyle. I certainly wouldn't have been able to bring my children and my wife along. Lee Cohen met a new friend, Chaviv Malul, and brought him into the kollel. First time I met him, it's kind of weird, but like I kind of fell in love with him. I can't say even what it was. There was something warm, kind, caring, charismatic, but it even transcended all those things. My father grew up in a traditional Israeli home. He grew up in a super ultra-Orthodox setting at all but definitely had great respect for the Orthodox community. Chaviv Malul was a unique person. Everyone who met him had a feeling this is somebody special, one of those people who's through and through the person who you see is the real person. He instantaneously fell in love with Kolo, and uh, I remember he took me a few times, and, you know, when he, when he came there, you saw how engaged he was with, with the people in the Kolo, with Rabbi Clara, with, uh, you know, just the whole atmosphere. Once my father started going to the Kolo, I knew he started learning this thing called Gemara, and he would have these 
copied sheets at, at the house that he would try to learn from, and Rabbi Klar would sometimes come over to the house and learn with him. The Cherry Hill Community Kollel to my father was basically his compass for life. I think he did this knowing that this was going to be our future. The moment I found out my father was sick, you know, a total like shock just went through me. It's nothing physical, it's something that totally just awakened my inside, my soul, and it was, you know, something that you didn't picture your life being like. You had your life set up in a certain way, and that picture is now totally different within a few seconds. When my father was getting more sick, he went to Israel, but towards the end he was in the hospital, and I was there in the waiting room, and in walks Rabbi Klar from 6,000 miles away. Was able to be there with him during his last week, together with him and his family, and it cemented a relationship with the entire Malul family, the Malul family in Israel, the Malul family here. Rabbi Klar was so involved in our life, leading up to my father's death, so much so that he actually came to Israel to be with my father during his last days. I sincerely felt after that point that I could go to Rabbi Klar about anything, and he would put in 100% of his efforts to, to take care of me no matter what it was that I requested. In 2016, after learning in yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael for two years, Roy Malul married Raquel Cohen, Lee Cohen's daughter, uniting the two families forever. My first son was named Chaviv Levi because my father's first name is Chaviv, and Raquel's father's name is Levi. So we took the two names from my father and from my father-in-law, and we kind of put them together and, and gave our child that name. After my father passed away, there was really no one directly affiliated. You know, obviously my mother was there, but the man figure in my life was now not around. I remember thinking to myself, you know, kind of on my own now, how am I going to get into yeshiva? After Rabbi Klar got me into going to Nair Israel in Baltimore, he would come down every single Thursday night to learn with me, and he would walk in through the door, and I would be like, like you know, so touched. Dedicated to Zechanishmas Chaviv Yosef Ben Hanania Malu, who a lot of people here witnessed. He was a chayzer b'tshuva. He was meisim nefesh. You know, through tremendous pain, he always. His simcha was always Taira, his happiness was Taira, and today we have the schus that his son is one of the rabbis in the kollel, Binyamin Malul. So the last letter is going to be written by Binyamin and Roy Malul. Hold In 2019, Ben made a Siyam Ashas in the Cherry Hill Kollel. To see what came about from him just attending the Kollel and learning with the rabbis. He has now children that are learning Torah every day, keeping Shabbos, doing mitzvahs. That was really what he wanted. Chaviv Malul's brother, Elon Malul, was inspired by the change he saw in his brother. Elon had never seen a Gemara until his brother introduced him to Torah when he was 26 years old. In a small place like Germany, in America, affect Jewish people in, in Israel. Israel is the place that you are surrounded with the Torah and people and rabbis. Sixteen years later, Elon Malul made a Siyam Hashas in Eretz Yisrael. The, my whole family, generation and generation of, of, of Be'ezrat Hashem, my, my kids, going to be a real Jewish room because of this little call in Israel. Then the story came full circle in 2017, when I was back in New Jersey visiting with my family. I was introduced to the Cherry Hill Kollel, and while I was in the Kollel, I saw a childhood friend of mine that I hadn't seen in years. 
Ben Malul. Ben was currently a rabbi in the kollel. And through the kollel, I was introduced to Rabbi Landa. Yes, the same Alex Landa who first came into the kollel to learn back in 2001. Rabbi Landa currently runs a Kirov organization called LAJ in Los Angeles. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I was working for late night comedy shows such as NBC Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and most recently CBS Late Late Show with James Corden. I was a writer and producer for the show. I produced many episodes of Carpool Karaoke, and I was around celebrities every single day. My wife, she was a childhood actress since she was eight years old. She was on TV shows such as Malcolm in the Middle, X-Files, Everybody Loves Raymond, and she was in movies with many famous celebrities. It's safe to say that we were probably living the lives that many people in this world dream of having. And then we went on a Kirov trip with Rabbi Landa to Eretz Yisrael and another trip to Poland. And Rabbi Landa's mantra is, in order to represent the Jewish people, you have to know what the Jewish people represent. Once we learned about Torah, and once we learned what it really meant to live a true Torah life, the decision to leave Hollywood was the easiest decision we ever made. Then my wife and I got married and Rabbi Landa was Masada Kedushin at our wedding. We made the decision to come to Eretz Yisrael to learn. We both didn't grow up with religious families, and we knew in order to ensure that our children have the best possible chance, B'zaz Hashem, to live a true Torah life, we needed to lay our foundation in Torah. And it's been the best decision we've ever made. We've been here now for three years, Baruch Hashem, living here with our family. I'm currently learning in the Mir, in Rav Elephant's Shir. All of this was only possible because of that connection at the Cherry Hill Kollel. Throughout our history, we've seen that communities that have places of Torah, where there are people studying Torah to the highest, most advanced levels, have become vibrant Torah centers, places where the children felt a connection to that Torah. Those who stayed connected and committed to the Torah were able to persevere, and we're still here today. There's a fire in the Torah, and it lights the spark that's in the soul of every Jew. And once that fire starts to burn, the ramifications are tremendous. There's a lot of camaraderie, and there's a big feeling of family amongst all the people that, in general, come to the Kolo on a regular basis. No matter who comes in, and no matter when the person comes in, there's always Torah learning going on, there's always something exciting going on, and anybody could have a place here and feel comfortable. This was just a snippet of some of the stories from people and families that have changed their lives, their families, and their entire future through connecting to the Torah in the Cherry Hill Kolo. With Hashem's help, many new and miraculous journeys are currently in the making. Kolel is a place where people can really go and get authentic Torah in Cherry Hill is extremely rare. There's no, there's no other place like it. Every time I come back to Cherry Hill, it's an amazing thing to see how many pe more people are coming in, how many more people are learning every day in the morning shiurim, and how many people's lives were changed because of this establishment. I can personally attest that the Cherry Hall Kolal is a place that builds neshamas. And anybody who donates will have a direct effect on changing the lives of thousands of people.